The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the May 11th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. The easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on an 877-927-6648. Now, if you got a question, but you can't dial in, you can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got a bit of a mixed bag out there. The mix is coming from the NASDAQ 100, which is very strong indice out here. It's up 16 points, about one-tenth percent. The other U.S. indices trading to the downside. The Dow's up 273, eight-tenths. Four-tenths for the S&P are 14 points. A little over 1% for the Russell. That's 19 points. Semi's down one three-tenths. That's 40 points out there. Tranny's up 120, about eight tenths. Gold is down six tenths for a percent or 12 bucks. Four percent for silver, that's a dollar six. Lights recruit off 90 cents. She trade out at 71.64. Natural gas up a nickel. The 30 year treasury printed out 131.19. That's up 29 ticks. Now, leading the charge, dollar wise, the upside, you've got Steris PLC up at 19.40. Integris is up at uh, is up 12.60. BlackRock is up 11 bucks. Copa Holdings up eight. Shockwave Medical up eight. To the downside is MicroStrategy off 22 bucks. Monolithic Power down 16. Asimil Holdings 10. Align Technology 9. Uh, Perkin Elmer is down nine bucks. Walt Disney is down eight bucks. So we got some movers and we've got some shakers. But let's first begin. But I just try to understand, hey, what's going on from a market breadth standpoint? So let's pull over those market breadth data statistics out here. And let's begin by taking a look at the NASDAQ 100. NASDAQ 100, we had a choppy market. The 60 minute has switched to a bearish crossover, just slightly, 32 above, 41 below. On the 240 minute time frame, we have a bullish crossover, 31 above, 30 below. On the daily time frame, where are we at out here? The daily, so we're kind of at a draw right there on the 240. The daily is 29 above, 24 below, and the weekly is a little bit of a bear. So we've got a mixed bag here with inside the NASDAQ 100. It's 26 above, 29 below for the weekly time frame. So expect what this says. The NASDAQ is a leader out here, and it doesn't have its uh, blank together out there, right? So we've got a little combination of some bear, some bullish uh, out here. So I would say choppy markets. Now, if we look at the S&P 500, we might have a more clear picture. And the answer is, son of a gun, we do not. So again, here we go with the choppy conditions. 60 minute time frame is bullish. What I mean by that, there's 157 above, 135 below. If we take a look at the four hour time frame, we've got 141 above, 133 below. And the daily, now we start to slip into the bearishness. 111 above, 157 below. And finally, on the weekly time frame, we've got 111 above and 172 below. So this is what's leading to these choppy markets. Also, the spot politics being below its 50-day exponential moving average. That's also leading to the choppy markets. One last bit of information from a market breadth standpoint. We do have the 30-minute market breadth, and we take a look at the S&P right now. It is bullish. You've got 150 above. 142 below. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ out there. Now, this will help us when we go take a look at the equity future contracts. 
You've got 30 above and 33 below. So again, we've got these choppy market conditions on top of all the consolidating patterns that we have out here. So we've got a two-way market. Now, let's go take a look at, um, well, here, let's put up this chart first. Here we've got, uh, you'll get, you can see the sideways consolidations. Uh, the Dow, you can see trading between rising and descending trend line resistance. In the case of the NQ, you can see that price clearly closed above resistance yesterday, both the top of its profile, the swing point that generated a Rhodes momentum indicator signal from May the 1st. And so therefore, this is suggesting, as far as the pattern is concerned, the only pattern that I can see out here is the A to B equals CD pattern. And that would give us a price projection of about 14,003. Nothing broken in the ES mini, just a consolidation, nothing broken inside the Russell, just a consolidation, and nothing broken inside the Dow, just trading between, again, trend line support and trend line resistance. Now let's go switch on. Let's take a look at the New York Stock Exchange. Where are we at? The advanced client asset is still below zero. This tells us that the sellers are the ones that are in control. Yeah, when we come over here, we take a look at spot volatility. It is still well below its 50-day exponential moving average, and that says buyers are the one that are in control. So we've got these different messages out here. So we don't have synergy. And that means we don't have a market that's going to move in one, one direction or the other. So now let's go switch over and take a look at the equity future contracts. Look at its multi time frame charts and try to get a feel for, whoops, that's not it. If I try to get a feel for what the... Um, for what the intraday charts are communicating to us. See if we can find some kind of patterns out here. So momentarily switch over to the proper background chart. Here's the ES mini. So we don't have to talk about the daily time frame. What we know about a five hour chart is you basically have a consolidation between 41.32 and 41.63. Those are its profiles. New profile is formed on the 240 minute chart, supported 41.18, resistance 41.67. Um, you're trading below profile on the 120 minute time frame chart. So that would say if the support level of 4118 fails, meaning we get a close below it on a four hour time frame chart, then that would open up the door for 4076. On a 60 minute time frame, prices found support at where it broke out at. That was at 4120. 41.24.50. I like Tom's expression. If you can't bust them to the downside, it tries to bust them to the upside. Where would be the bust them to the upside? On a 60-minute time frame chart, that would be 41.49 or thereabouts. We see a teeny nine count bottom on the 30-minute chart. I did uh, uh, make uh, uh, everybody inside the den aware of it, maybe about 15 minutes, 20 minutes before the show started, So, or, or maybe it was a little bit longer than that so that they could make their plans. And I didn't just show them the ES Mini. We had three of the four equity future contracts, which I'll share with you, uh, that were forming those TD9 count bottoms. Now, typically, when you get that TD9 count bottom, uh, odds favor, significant odds favor, price makes its way back to that oscillator and change line, whether it's a top or it's a bottom uh, signal out there. So, in this case here, that uh, would take us up towards the 41 to 44 level. No patterns on the uh, 15 minute, the 10 minutes got a rose momentum indicator bottom. And if price can stay above the uh, top of its daily profile, the top of its daily profile is 41.34. We'd be looking at a move to about the 41.52 area. So remember, the ES Mini on a 30 minute basis, its market breadth was bullish. And on a 60 minute basis, its market breadth was bullish. So what this tells us is price really ought to make that run towards the 41.44, 41.46, 41.49 area. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We're going to take a look at uh, Google for Hector, GSM for Dan, crude oil and gold for Siegel. Coach, I'd love to hear from you as well. 877-927-6648 or Steve at TFNM.com. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60 minute webinar archive he just hosted Forex Strategies and Fundamentals What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30 day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN Educating Investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, folks. Dow's down 271. S&P's up 15. NASDAQ is up 15. The Russell's down 20. We're taking a look at those 30-minute equity future charts. You can see those TD9 count bottoms, the ES lower left, uh, upper left, and uh, Dow lower left, and Russell the uh, lower right. So we, we already talked about the ES where it should target. The Dow should target the 33,393 level, and the Russell 2000 should make its way up towards the 1754 mark. No bottom signal inside of the NQ for its 30 minute time frame, but price has regained its profile. So that's a little short term positive. Uh, the resistance level inside the NQ, this is a resistance level to be looking at. This is a 30 minute a bearish structured profile is between 13,447 and 13,465 out there. So that's your resistance zone. So let's go take a look at one of our first requests. This one coming in from Hector, Hector and Patty. And they want to take a look at Google. So let's get over to those charts here. Give me a moment. Let me turn this to this 30 minute set of charts, free up a little bit of resources. And then let's get over to the Google charts. And then let's actually read the question from Hector. So the question go, well, let's get to the right set of charts. The Hector goes like the, the Hector. The question goes like this. Hope you're feeling better. I am. So Hector, I had that just woke up and had a this is a couple days ago, folks, had a, a little touch of um, vertigo, the kind where when I sat in front of my screen to do the newsletter, which I did for a while and all the flashy numbers and everything like that, I could say this was going really south. So I just shut it down and uh, recovered fairly decently. It's one of the fastest recoveries I've had from the uh, vertigo. So maybe it's from eating all the cat food uh, that I am and losing all the weight. So, uh, so I am, and thanks for even asking Google, how do you configure an A to B equals CD up on the weekly time frame, or do you use a rectangle box breakout for a price projection? So great question out here. So the, the A to B equals CD, for the weekly that I would use, I would start with my A point being down here at the uh, November 4th uh, low. That was down at about the 83.45. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. There could be another one. 
Okay, so far so good. So that's our A point. And that takes us up to the high that was formed out here on February 3rd. Then it makes a retracement. looks like about a 0.786 retracement into a low from the uh, week that began uh, or from the week that ended February 24th. So this is on the weekly basis. This has made the 1 to 1 A to B equals CD. Now, a question might be, well, Stebo, can you just take the uh, B point over here to the where it's got letter D, part of the Chapman wave? Can you do that? And then, uh, and then this would become your A to B equals CD, a much larger one. So that B point, for example, on the weekly, has volume of 97 million. So far for the week, we've done 117. So Hector, I'd say that you can. Now what we'll do is I'll go switch over to my black background chart since it's gonna give us a more accurate number. But here on that weekly basis, when you take a look at A to B equals CD, if this is the one that's in play, then what we'd be looking at, because that's a, probably a 0.382 or less. If it's less than a 0.382, then it's really not the right uh, A to B equals CD pattern. But if it is, let's assume it's very close to 0.382 retracement. I would say price would at least target the 132.94 level, which I really think is your question. But you're looking for a price projection. And even before we deal with that, the real price projection, or really the question is, where is the next resistance level? Where is the next battle? Where do those sellers lie at? Well, that question can be answered by taking a look at the monthly set of profiles. And that number is 119.80. We're above the daily profiles. We're above the weekly profiles. So then we default to the next time frame, and that's the monthly time frame. So 119.80 is a real number that you want to pay attention to. If price can get through that, then that could be signaling to move up to 132, 152. And if you look at the daily time frame chart, there's no topping a signal whatsoever. There is an A to B equals CD. But let's go switch over to those black background charts. Let's provide... Hector and Patty with the accurate A to B equals CD price projection levels out here. So let's get back to our three time frames. And here on the daily time frame, I really think the daily time frame will take into account that A to B equals CD that we looked at on the weekly chart. So here, Hector, what we can see is that this has a one to one price British. It was a 30 percent retracement. So it is less than 0.382. It is less than 0.382. And the interesting thing is I've got two sets of, um, of profile levels uh, inside of, uh, inside of uh, Google. So the one that I gave on the white background was at 119.80. And the one in the black background, as you can see here, is at 125.87. So just a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD has a price projection of 124.07. We've got the volume, that B point on this A to B equals CD had volume of about 34 million shares. We took it out yesterday with 47. 47, you're already 30 today. So even though not a 0.382 retracement, we'll still use that as a price target level. But I say the real price target is going to be between 119.80 and 125.87 out there, Hector. So I don't really think we have to worry about the A to B equals CD patterns, knowing that we've got this profile information. So I hope that helps you and Patty. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in and have a, a thirsty Thursday. That was for Hector. Next question, we're going to switch back to those white background charts. So just give me a moment to do that. We want to take a look at GSM. Well, actually, let me stay here just for a tad. GSM, let me fire it up on this uh, black background set of charts out here and see what we've got. So you're trading up at 459. Okay, so I'm glad that I did that. Let me turn off this A to B equals CD. So Dan's question is, or could be, First of all, is I think just to take a look at it. But, Dan, now that we are taking a look at GSM, and it is at the high of the day, what it's about to do is take on that trend line resistance. So I assume that you've drawn that trend line in there. As far as that price point today, where would that get us to? About the 467-ish area, right around there. So price is headed into a descending trend line. You can see on the weekly basis all kinds of trend line resistance that it's running into. So if it can clear through this congestion area, then what this ought to do is run up to the 507 level. Now, 507 has been on a closing base, have been a real key thorn in Fair Globe side because that has been tested now for three months in a row. You know what they do say? It's not the third time that's the charm in stock trading. It's the fourth. It's the fourth charm. It's the fourth charm. Yeah. Typically, if you try to bust up the first three times, you don't make it through, but on the fourth time you do. So maybe that's what it's going to do. Nonetheless, Dano, it's 507 is the number to be watching. Now let's go to those white background charts, see if there's any additional information that we can glean from it. Where are we in, in that with regard to TD? Well, you got 452. That was a TD nine count breakdown area. So that looks pretty good, but still you've got to deal with that trend line. You don't have to, but price is going to need to. So it looks to me like this wants to make a run for that 507 area. Again, the bottom 
of that monthly profile. And if you can get a close above that, and preferably, quite frankly, a close above its oscillator and change line, that's currently printing at about 514. If you're to get a close above that, that would be a real nice bullish outcome. So your next resistance level is at 507 uh, area, and uh, you've got three days up in a row on a GSM. Let's pull this back, take a quick peek at the consecutive days. Higher closer, three days to the upside out here. Typically you get, well, this has had some seven and eight days, so this has had some, some fairly decent moves. But the typical moves are two to four days to the upside. This is day number three as you approach a uh, TD9 count breakdown area at 470. Is that right? Or what was that? Let me see here. Huh. No, I don't know what that 470 is off the top of my head. So I'm going to have to come back and take a look at that chart out there. But I don't see any kind of a, a topping signal on the 30-minute time frame. Even though we're up towards resistance uh, potential areas, I don't see any kind of a top here. So GSM should continue to move higher and head towards that 507-ish mark out there. Let's go to the next request. This one coming in from uh, Seagull. He's going to want to take a look at uh, light sweet crude. So we'll get those charts up on our screen. Of course, folks, give us a call at 877-927-6648. Go ahead and send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFN.com. We'll be right back. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding the reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. You got the uh, Dow down 250, S&P's off 12, NASDAQ 100 up 33 points right now. That's about a quarter percent move to the upside. Uh, let's go take a look at Lightspeed Crew. This is for Seagull inside the uh, Tiger's Den. We take a look at Lightspeed Crew, and I'll get that up here momentarily. I know in the 30-minute time frame, you've got a, a TD9 count bottom. That's going to be your upper right-hand panel chart. Now, what price is doing right now, Seagull, I don't know what your time frame was that you were looking at, but I just want to give you the play-by-play -play out here. So you can see the nice TD9 count bottom and price initially finding resort. Remember how I've shared with you, you make that TD9 count, you're typically going to get to that oscillator and change line, whether it's a top or a bottom. Here you can see how that played out on the 30-minute time frame. It got right up there. It rejected that level. Uh, it is trading with inside a profile right now. But if it can clear that 71, 79-ish area, you ought to make a move up to 73, 21. So just trading into resistance, that's that oscillator and change line. On the uh, daily time frame, you know, price pulled back to the TD9 count breakout level, 67.02, ran right into resistance at its oscillator and change line. So if it uh, cannot get above that, what it might want to do from a downside standpoint is get to 67.93. Now, the cool thing about the TD9 count on the 30-minute time frame, it's not going to get to 67.93 unless it takes out that bottoming pattern. So that's the cool thing about it. So you know that you should have strong support at that low. That low is 70.63. If price closes below that, and you're wondering where is it likely headed to, that answer would be 67.93. At least that's the answer that Steve would provide to you, at least at this stage of the game out there. Is there anything else that we can find here in Lightsweet Crude? It does have support at the bottom of its uh, profile out there in the monthly time frame, so that's good. Um, I see an A to B equals CD pattern on the 60-minute time frame. That's being confirmed as we speak right now, but there's still 28 minutes left in this session, so it could end up not being a bullish reversal candle. But that would then suggest to move up to 72.30. So based upon the patterns that we're seeing out here, Siegel, it looks to me like uh, intraday, uh, you know, you've got the Lightspeed Crew that has at least a short-term bottom, should make its way towards that 72.29, 73.21 level. So I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for you also wanted to look at goldilocks so let's go switch over to those charts here as we pull up the gold charts gold consolidating um uh, has been in a consolidation for a bit of time out here that consolidation is basically from about the level to the downside right around the 1965 level and to the upside it's right around the 2063 area so that sets up our sideways consolidation inside of goldilocks now you can see this road's momentum indicator top on the daily time frame i'll just expand out the chart there you can see also wave number seven. So you got two topping signals. But price continues to find support at the top of that daily profile. And that number, which is a real important number to continue to observe, is 2019. If price closes below that, it gets back inside the profile, and then it likely goes to target the support level between 1986 and 1996. But that is not the pattern right now. The pattern right now is a top with a sideways move. It can't bust through any kind of levels of support. That's strong when we take a look at uh, Goldilocks out there. Now, let's take a look at some of the other time frame charts, see if there's any other signals out here. Hmm. So what pops out at you? Not much. So I don't have really a great uh, intraday set of signals out here to tell us what gold's intent is. If I look at a 30-minute time frame chart... I see that price has made its way back to a swing point. It didn't get all the way down there, I don't believe. Let's take a look at that. The high would have been 2016.50, and the low out here is 2016.70. Missed it by that much. Um, so I don't have much out here to uh, to provide you with regard to uh, Goldilocks, uh, what it's doing on the uh, in the intraday time period. What I can share with you, though, is that the U.S. dollar index – uh, uh, did hit resistance and it's starting to back off, which was the top of its profile consolidation. So perhaps that may be the signal, uh, Siegel. It's the only signal that I could really find for you with regard to gold at this stage. So I hope that helps you out. Raj had a question. Roger and the Tigers, did want to take a look at ticker symbol RF? So let me close out uh, gold here. Probably should close out Lightspeed Crude. Let's free up a little bit of space source there we go resources and let's get over and take a look at this rf rf industries let me see uh get over to the charts it's regions financial it's not rf industries but it's regions financial so let's see what this uh, bank is doing how well it's holding up uh where did stevie put that there no not there let's try this spot 
Yep, there we go. So we take a look at Regions Financial. We can see the scare day, scare week out here, which takes us back into that uh, session of March 13th. Now, the volume there, 41 million shares. Give you an idea. Uh, first time down here, we did 24 million shares today. So far, we're at 3.6 million shares. So that's a big nut. You know, Tom would sit here and he would tell us with certainty that that low is going to get tested because that's a high volume low out there. Now, what we are doing right now, Rogers, we're testing support, which is the bottom of its profile. It's actually trading at 1593 and the bottom of the profile is at 1593. I know my chart here in the white background says 1580, but uh, it, it just, there's a, just a delay on this type of a, a symbol out there. But if price does close below that profile, well, it's trading into a swing point that did volume at 24 million. And again, today you're at 4.2. I don't care how we cut it or slice it here. It's pulling back with light volume. But you're below profile. You're below weekly profile. You're below monthly profile. So I'm sticking with Tom. I'm saying this is going to test. This has got to test that high volume low. That's from March 13th. And that's down at the 1394 level out there. And that's what I see when I take a look at Regions Financial. So I do hope that that helps you out, Roger. And thanks so much for taking the time to write in. Peter, Peter from Park City, he's wanted. he wants to go hunting for the euro. So let's see if we can help him out here, see what that is uh, doing out here. So I know the euro has got an A to B equals CD to the upside, but it's uh, struggling or it has been struggling. So let's take a look at what it really is doing out here. The first thing that we see is uh, that let's pull up the week or the monthly time frame chart. So the euro, which looked like last month, it was getting ready to get back inside this trend line. This month it's saying, you know, maybe not so fast out there. So Peter, one of the things that I would do on my long-term chart, like Steve has done here, is I'd go ahead and draw those trend lines in and just see how price is reacting. Because if it can get back inside there without a topping pattern, it should continue to move higher. So that's what the big, but right now, that's not the message. The message that we have is that last month may have been a false breakout. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, so the weekly time frame chart shows us what? It shows us this shooting star, which is a sell the D point pattern. This is from the week of February 3rd, that that is your strong resistance level, Peter. And that's at 1.1033. So we need a close above that in order to suggest that it wants to get up to 117. Now, you've got a wave number seven pattern. That confirmed two weeks ago. And what price is doing, it's testing this green oscillator and change line. So we've got the top in place out here. Let's count the second top, that wave number seven. And if price can hold this green oscillator and change line on a weekly basis, which is currently printed at 1.089, that would be a bullish outcome. You would still have a neutral signal because of a top but a key level of support would have held out there. Now, quick peek at the daily time frame. What do you got here? Well, just like we have with the U.S. dollar, you've got a good old-fashioned consolidation pattern. And like Hector had said to us earlier, if you break through this consolidation pattern, well, then we would have a measured move equal to or greater than that consolidation. So right now, you've got the dollar up at the top of resistance or its consolidation and the euro at the bottom of its consolidation, everything here making sense. So I hope that helps you out, Peter. Uh, give us a call at 877-927-6648 or send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. You got the uh, Dow down 240 right now. SB's off 11, NASDAQ 100. I'm 31 points. Russell is off uh, 17. That's about 1% to the uh, downside. We're taking a look at the charts here for ON. That is on semiconductor. And uh, this is for Tim M. And Tim would like to take a, a long position inside of ON semiconductor. So, Tim, a couple of different things out here. First, uh, just so you know, on a uh, monthly basis, price is trading with inside its profile and found resistance at the top of that profile at 8103. Support is down at the uh, 5819 uh, level and another area support at 71 and a quarter. On a weekly basis, you are trading with inside its profile levels. That's from 7358 to 8476. So you haven't been able to break out. You're trading with inside profiles. You are uh, you do not have a topping signal on the daily time frame. So where is the buy point? There will be a couple of them. The first one right now would be at 77.91. That's the green oscillator and change. I know that number is going to change by a penny or two. But if price pulls back there and holds that level, that would be a entry area. If price closes below that, then it's likely to run back to the 75.06 or 72.66 area, knowing that we have weekly profile support at 73.58. So I'd say 73.58 if we get a close below 77.92, it would really be, it would go like this. Below 77.92, you'd look at 75.06 and then 73.58. Now, another possibility, if we look at the intraday charts out here, the intraday charts, this is a 30-minute time frame chart. We see a nice road's momentum indicator top. We see a TD9 count bottom. We see price trading between breakout support. That's at either 77.33 or 77.48 and breakdown resistance up at the 80. Oh, 96 level out there. So this would say that in those ranges, 77.33, 77.48, or a couple of pennies above that, that could be an entry point area for you as well. And that is for on semiconductor. Finally, with regard to ON, which I like the shoes, on semiconductor shoes. No, those are the Roger Federer shoes out there. They actually are really comfortable for walking in. In any event, if we take a look at ON, um, this will be day number one. It could be day 
day number one to the downside. We can see the last two retracements here have been two bar moves, and we can see several two bar moves, a couple of four bar moves out there. So this is what I would say if you're looking for an entry area, I'd say tomorrow would be the day to be looking for that based upon the potential of getting a two bar knee jerk reaction move to the downside inside of on semiconductor. So I hope that helps you out, Tim. Thanks so much for taking the time to write in. But got me inside the Tigers Den. Let's take a look at ticker symbol CPRX. So let's see if we can find that. This is having a terrible day out there. Sorry about that. McGuppy CPRX. And his question is buy, sell, or hold. So we take a look at this instrument here. It's pulling back. Volume today so far about 3.4 million shares. And it's going into that breakout, which was uh, from January 23rd. And that breakout did volume of 18 million shares. So even though you're pulling back, you're still pulling back in this breakout with lighter volume. That's kind of interesting out there. How come that didn't show up? There we go. Three million. What the Sam heck? I know it's not three million. Oh, CPRX. No. CPRX. Yeah. The volume on that trading day, January 23rd. Maybe I didn't go back far enough. That could be the problem. There we go. Here it is. January 23rd. So it's this candle right here. That's the one that's got the 18 million shares. You're still trading inside it. That low has not been tested. You're trading below profile. You're asking buy, sell, or hold. <clears throat> I don't know where you're at with your entry price. What I can share with you is price has found support so far at the bottom of the weekly profile. So, McGuppy, that number is 1432. That's the number to really be paying attention to. If you were to see a close below that, now on a weekly basis, as an example, there's two swings it's trading into. Run from, went from the week of March 17th, 14 million shares there. You are at 8 million shares so far today. So it looks like lighter volume. And then on the uh, weekly time frame, you've got this uh, candle from January 27, 34 million shares. You're definitely uh, pulling back on lighter volume. But if you did close below 14.32, I would have to say that 12.49 would be open, would be game. But it could also be the test of these swing points out there. Um, don't know. On a, a monthly time frame, it says 14.13 is an area to watch. So you go from 14.32 to 14.13 to then trigger those moves lower, either to test those swing lows or to test the breakout level at 12.49 coming from the weekly time frame. On a intraday basis out here, on an intraday basis, so that first move to the downside must be in earnings was 1.3 million shares. The last uh, 30 minutes was 400,000 shares. Before that was 750. Before that, 400,000 shares. I don't have anything on a 30-minute time frame that gives you any kind of a hope. So this says there's no reason to buy. You ask buy, sell, or hold. Um, the hold piece, you're pulling back with light volume. I don't know where you're at, what kind of pain, where you've got your stop set, things of that sort. So you've got to do that assessment, but you understand where price is likely headed to or when like price might head lower based upon busting through some of these key levels of support that you and I have already taken a look at that have held. So watch 1413, watch 1432. If those things uh, fail, then we're likely headed lower for CPRX. So I hope that helps you out. And it says um, no buy-in, but you might want to uh, hold. And as far as selling, I'd hold off until we see it closes below those levels out there. So just adjust your stops. So I do hope that helps you out. Uh, the next question was from Alan the Great, who wants to take a look at Boyle, which I'll put up right here right now, Alan. I didn't get a chance to put that up ahead of time. But to give you, you specifically asked about intraday. And quite frankly, you and I, we don't really care about the intraday signals inside of a Boyle, meaning here if I put over a 30-minute time frame chart, because that's not going to tell you and I a whole hill of a lot of beans out here. What's going to tell us a whole hill of a lot of beans is the actual contract. So right now, Boyle, if you're long Boyle, it is the June contract inside of natural gas that makes up the entirety of it, or at least it did as of yesterday. Um, so let's go take a look at natural gas. And let's give you a better information out here. So first, with regard to natural gas, you've got a, a potential Rosemontum indicator bottom pattern that would be triggered today if we get that bullish reversal candle. And currently, you've got a piercing candle. Price is trading above the top of its daily profile. What natural gas wants to do is move higher 
and that means at least go target $2.42. So therefore, Boyle will also move higher. If I take a look at a five-hour time frame chart out here, what do I have? Not much, just a consolidation with inside profile. The same thing on the 240. On the 120-minute chart, we got a TD nine-count bottom. That has been the bottom. So that would say you'd want to be watching that low for further signals, low of being 216. If price closed below that, then what we should do is see natural gas head lower. But here what we've got is a TD nine-count bottom. It is now taking price to its breakdown resistance level of $2.25. So if the daily chart is going to get us to 242, we know that that TD nine count breakdown level has to fail. So your next very key ingredient, your next very key level to be watching is going to be $2.25 on the June contract for natural gas. If price clears that, Boyle continues to add higher. If price doesn't clear that, it hasn't been able to bust them up. Doesn't mean it busted all the way down, but it just says, hey, we're still in this consolidation on the five hour and the four hour time frame charts out there. I don't see any other kind of signals, topping or otherwise. So that's what I see when I take a look at those intraday charts there, Alan the Great for natural gas, which is really what you should be looking at if you trade UNG or Boyle. Steve Rhodes with TFN will be back to uh, take a look at the YM, the Dow intraday charts to close out the show for Roger inside the Tiger's Den. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Folks, so we'll take a look at the uh, intraday charts here for the Dow Equity Future contract. There's really two bottom patterns that have uh, formed out here. The first one, uh, or 
really both the well the first one really taking place on the 10 minute time frame chart that was a nice td9 count bottom that pattern completed at 1020 while that was going on we were getting a td9 count pattern pattern inside the dow equity future contract and that uh, completed at uh, 10 a.m out there so you had those two uh, inside the 10-minute uh, chart here for the uh, Dow Equity Future contract, you now have a TD9 count top. That pattern is going to complete as we go off the air. So if this is controlling the uh, movement here, that says we should see a pullback towards the 33,273 level. But I wouldn't make that move just right away. I'd be watching to see because this TD9 count bottom for the uh, Dow Equity Future contract, Roger, it's targeting that 33,393 level. When we went through those 30-minute charts uh, half an hour ago, 45 minutes ago, that's what we were looking at. So that's likely to happen. If price is able to close above 33,393, well, obviously this 10-minute uh, TD9 count will fail, and that would suggest we move up to 33,661. Those are the only two time frames that have got the uh, signals out here. Uh, on a daily basis, you know, you have pulled back into a swing point for back on uh, May the 4th, but you're still inside that swing point, so it's not really releasing a whole lot of information. It's going to be the 10 and the 30-minute time frame charts that you want to really focus in on. If we take a look at what's going on on a daily time frame, it looks like this could be day number four of a, a consecutive move lower out there. Last time we had that, well, we had one big move uh, to the upside out there. That was on May the 5th. Um, you typically don't get much beyond four consecutive days to the downside. You did at one additional day back on March the 13th out here. But um, so this says that the uh, Dow Equity Future contract should bottom today or worst case uh, tomorrow out there. So that's what I see. When we take a look at those intraday charts. Raj, I hope that that helps you out and everybody as well. I want to thank you so much for taking the time to send me those requests out there, whether it was Hector by phone or inside the uh, Tiger's Den. Want everybody to have a, a terrific uh, Thursday out there. Sat P, I see it just coming in, but it's too late. It's too late. End phase energy. I wish you would have sent that earlier. But let's make, get to end phase energy tomorrow. <laughs> Folks, stay tuned. Great programming lined up for you. I'll be back here on Fantastic Friday. Please have a terrific Thursday. Take care.